Hello, my name is Anaya, and uh, my pre your presenter today is Mrs. Naughton, Carol Naughton, and today we will be presenting the coaching tips session for the FLL Coaches Clinic. So really quickly, before we start, I'm going to go over how this presentation will continue. I have muted you for now, but if you have any questions, please type them in the chat or use the raise hand function by selecting the participants tab to raise your hand, and we will call on you when we can. And we strongly encourage you to ask a question in the chat if that's more convenient because we can keep track of your questions if we do that. Um, and please use the chat and the reactions features appropriately. And I would like to let you know that these presentations will be recorded uh, for future use and for sharing to others. So I will let Mrs. Naughton get started. Hi, I'm Carol Naughton and I coached uh, First Lego League for about 10 years and then I went on to mentor high school Husky robotics team um, who are the ones that put on this whole clinic and um, I've continued to stay involved with FLL by participating in the state committee that uh, runs the league in Illinois so hopefully you will find this presentation helpful um, first thing I'm going to go over are the things that I go over every year with coaches on you know, attitude and how to work with the kids. And I'm also going to try to cover a little bit of ways that you can stay connected when you can't be in the same place, um, just a little bit at the end. So why do we do first Lego league? For me, it was because it was more than just the robots. It wasn't like um, some other competitions where it was a bunch of parents who helped their kids to the point where it was the parents winning the award rather than the kids. This is about the kids and it's about building their skills. Um, it stresses learning rather than winning and that to me is huge. Um, it exposes kids to a wider possibility for their future. And by that I mean they talk to experts, they talk to people who are engineers and scientists and business people and inventors and then they can start to see themselves in those roles later on. It also empowers them to solve real world problems. Um, I have a student who I started out with as a fifth grader who is now um, an engineer working at um, SpaceX and he designed the interior of the cargo hold for um, the last for the, the Dragon um, lunar module and he said to me when he was in high school that his favorite thing about FLL was that as even as a fifth grader, he knew that he could make a difference and he could solve problems at any age and contribute to society. And now he really is contributing to society. Um, and it gives them skills beyond the technical, it teaches them how to communicate, how to present to other people, how to include other people's ideas, how to listen and how to, how to talk. Um, so I think it gives them a lot of skills beyond just computer programming and engineering, which are all great skills too, but I think this program is bigger than that. Um, general advice for any adult that's going to interact with your team, including parents, um, is to be a good role model. Um, decide when and how you're going to talk about things. If it's something that the kids don't need to be involved in that might be a dispute, talk to each other first. Um, and then, you know, go to the kids as a united front. Um, everybody should keep a positive attitude. We all get frustrated with life. Teaching kids how to deal with frustration in a positive way um, is probably the best lesson you could ever give them. Um, encourage teamwork and insist on mutual respect. Um, sometimes you might disagree with somebody, but how you disagree with them is just as important as the fact that you disagree with them. Don't overemphasize winning. Winning isn't everything, and winning can be defined in very different ways. You know, accomplishing one mission at, at a tournament or in your video um, that wasn't working before is winning. Um, it's not really about the prizes, it's about accomplishing your personal goals. Um, encourage reasonable goal setting. What might be a goal for somebody else's team is not your goal. Um, your goal is to learn and do better than possibly the last time you did something, not necessarily beating somebody else. Um, and have fun with it all. There's no reason why um, you, this has to be um, stressful to the point where you're unhappy. Um, it's a competition, it's a project. And 
one of the things you can teach kids that is that even when you're working, it doesn't have to be all work and no play. It can be work and play together. And if they learn that lesson, they'll have a really good life. Um, one thing that is definitely a rule um, is that the kids do the work. Um, one quote from an old round of FLL um, core values is, we do the work and find solutions with guidance from our coaches and mentors. As a coach or a mentor, your role is to facilitate, not to do. Um, it's to fill the kids' toolbox, but not to apply those tools to, the salute, to, the, to this year's challenge. That's the kid's job. Um, the other thing is that don't be afraid when the kids want to dive into something that you may not understand or you may not know about. Um, you don't know, no, need to know everything before your kids. Um, you don't need to know everything before your kids. Um, you guys can learn together and it's almost more fun when you learn together because you're in that discovery process together and you're teaching your kids to be lifelong learners. Am I not? My screen's not moving. Oh, there we go. Um, so there's a difference between guiding the kids versus doing the work and being that facilitator. So the first thing is that you want to fill their mental toolbox. And how do you do that? You do that by teaching them either NXT, well, NXT is old. So this, this was a borrowed slide from a different presentation. But your, the EV3 programming or whatever programming language that you're going to use, um, teach them that programming language and how all the features of it work and maybe some basic mechanics like how gears work, um, how pulleys work, how a forklift works, things like that. But then let them apply them to the challenge. Teach them a good design process. Um, you know, how do you come up with uh, your design requirements? How do you test a solution? How do you prototype? How do you then reevaluate and do a, an engineering review on your prototype to improve it and make it better. Um, and the same thing goes with your project. You know, how do you, how do you get from your basic research where you're learning about a topic to then coming up with the solution to then refining and applying your solution and making it real? Um, the process is what you teach them and then the work is what they do. How do they generate ideas? How do they evaluate their techniques? How do, how do you, they use different techniques to, for evaluation? Um, how do you experiment, test, and observe things? Those are good skills to teach them. Um, different organizational tools from uh, using Google Sites to using a project management tool like Trello, um, teaching them how to use the tools and then let, let them set up the tools for the challenge. Um, research skills. Research skills are very important and I think they're a thing that a lot of um, people get lost with um, research isn't hard. It's just not Googling stuff, something, you know, work with your local librarians or your school librarians to work to teach the kids research skills and then they can find the all the information that they need and then teach them how to problem solve. And like I said, let them apply all the skills you're teaching them to the actual challenge to do the work. Um, these are two teaching methods that you might be able to use. Um, the first one is called the gradual release of responsibility. Um, and it goes from focused instruction where you're actually directly teaching the kids something or modeling something for your, for your kids all the way to independent learning. And these um, methods, that, that gradual release of responsibility might happen for a small task over the course of a meeting, but might happen for your whole team over the course of a year or a couple of years. So that, you know, maybe in their fourth grade year or their fifth grade year, you're doing a lot of the work to organize and, um, and teach them processes. And by the end, they're learning independently and they're teaching each other and they're guiding the team with more of their own effort than of yours. And if you start this process in fourth grade, by the time you're an eighth grade coach, you're doing very little work or or at least a lot less than you were doing when they were in fourth grade and you can focus on other things. Um, the edge method um, is being explained actually in another um, session, but it basically stands for explain, demonstrate, guide, and enable. And this is something that you can actually teach your kids so that they can then teach each other different skills. Um, 
it's really good to learn open-ended questioning to work with your kids. So instead of asking them something that's yes or no, you know, tell me about a time when this happened and why do you think your robot is doing this? Or how did you solve a prob another problem that you can relate to this one? What happened when the robot didn't make it all the way to the mission model? Those things so that they can then observe and give you a more detailed answer. Um, one thing that you want to avoid is never letting your kids get frustrated. Um, it is kind of part of our nature to problem solve for our kids, even as parents. Um, and if they never get frustrated, they might never get to the aha moment, the, that moment when that light bulb goes on and they get this really, really good idea. Um, I had a student a number of years ago, he was working on a particular mission where they had to get two trucks with rubber wheels side by side out to a mission model and it had to turn ever so slightly at an angle. Um, one of the models it was picking up on its way out to the mission model, one of the trucks, and the other truck was in base already. And this poor kid worked and worked and worked and got frustrated and frustrated and frustrated. And then he finally figured out that he could flip over the truck that was in base already and reduce the amount of friction that he was encountering. And then it made the whole mission work. And I think that had he been helped with this because I probably would have come up with a different solution than the one he came up with because I didn't help him. He got there on his own. And I think that's something that we all need to be patient with when we're working with our students. Um, so practical matters. We'll start with team organization. Um, your team can decide how you divide, divide responsibilities. And this year it might um, end up being that your logistics of where your equipment is divides this responsi these responsibilities for you. But you might have builders, programmers, and researchers. It might be mission-based where certain students or certain team members work on certain missions or certain parts of the project. Um, you might assign student leads or team member leads to different things so that they can drive um, whatever it is that they're in charge of. Um, you always need to make sure that there are kids other kids who understand that project or that part of the project so that if somebody's sick or somebody can't be there, somebody else can pick up where they left off. Um, you'll probably end up with some specialists, but you really want to make sure that all of the kids are getting the benefit of all parts of the program. So encourage those kids who may, gen may gravitate towards project or robot to work with each other. Maybe assign somebody who's really strong at robot to work with somebody who's, who prefers to do project and is really strong at research and have them teach each other those skills. Um, everybody should at least understand and contribute to all the aspects of the team's work. So collaboration tools, um, those are gonna be really, really important this year. <laughs> Um, so you can use online resources like Google Docs or Google Drive, Google, um, I'm sorry, Google Slides, all of those, Dropbox, Trello, et cetera. Um, and that way everybody can get into the data at any time. You, have, you can have really easy remote collaboration. It also helps to keep the information organized because those things are all searchable. Um, but the best thing for you to do as a coach, if you're not a teacher, is to find out what the kids use in school and try to use the same kind of tools because then you don't have to teach them how to use the tools. They may actually teach you how to use the tools. Um, you can also still use hard copy, log books, whiteboards, and bulletin boards, even if you're not meeting in the same spot. You just need to make sure that um, for for some, some of them like whiteboards and bulletin boards, maybe you're taking a picture of those and posting it in another um, medium, such as a Google Doc or a Google site. Um, and logbooks just need to go with whatever, like if you're using a logbook with your robot as kind of an engineering notebook, then you wanna be able to pass that along when you're passing along your robot equipment if you're not working all in the same space.
All right, so I'm going to give you a quick demo of how to set up a Google site for your team. So if you have a Google account, you have access to all of the Google um, platforms. And I'm just going to go into my Google Drive and I'm going to hit new. And if I go down here and I hit more, one of my uh, choices is Google Sites. So if I click on that, I will open up a new Google Site. And you can title it your team. You can upload an image here. Um, and then if you want to, whatever you want to add to your site, if you go over here, you'll notice that there's, you can add text boxes, you can add images, you can embed um, widgets into your site. So for a long time, my team liked to have a countdown to when we had to have something due. And that was kind of the first thing when you open their site that you can embed a timing widget. Um, there's different layouts you can use, but it's all here kind of at the click of a button. And then you can also add pages. So like you might have a landing page, but then you might also want to add a page and you can add pages down here at this plus sign. And I'm gonna make one my robot. And then I'm gonna add another page for project. And that way my team can keep all of this, all of their stuff in one spot and not um, have to worry about where they're posting links and things like that. All right, where do I go to get back to me? There we go. So that's how easy it is to create an online site for your team. Um, behavior, it's going to be interesting if you're on a Zoom meeting because it's hard to control behavior remotely. Um, but one of the big things to um, head off misunderstandings is communicating, communicating expectations to both your team and your um, parents at the get-go. Um, you want to review your core values early and often. Um, you want to have a parent meeting, even if it's over Zoom, so that the parents all know what the expectations for attendance and involvement and behavior are. Um, and sometimes you might even want to have a team contract. So I'm going to open that up. Um, some teams will have all of the members sign a team contract so that it's clear. Whoops. And I'm not going to read all of this, um, but just it, it, it might even be something that your team can do as um, a team building activity is like, okay, what do we expect from each other? How do we want to communicate? And then you would create your own team contract and all of the team members would then have created it and agreed to it. Oops. And that is all of the tips I have for now, but I'm probably sure I could come up with some more if you guys have some spe specific questions. If you don't have questions now, we have a Q&A session at the end of the day. So feel free to attend that if you come up with any questions later or feel free to contact us or email us at info at team3061.org. Um, if you don't have any last questions, then I think we'll end the call right now. Thank you for attending. Thanks.